watching this video, you are probably curious about chiropractic care and how it can help you and your family. So let's explore what chiropractic is all about and how it works. A chiropractor is a healthcare professional who specializes in the health and function of the spine and nervous system. Because of this focus on the spine, many people think chiropractors can only help with problems such as back pain, neck pain and headaches. And it is true that chiropractors can often help with these things, but there is so much more to chiropractic than just pain. Chiropractic care is really about total health and well-being. It's about helping people to feel great and get the most out of life by functioning at their optimal potential. The spine is there to protect the spinal cord, which is part of the central nervous system. The spine is like a set of armour made up of segments so that it can bend and move naturally with the body. A spinal segment consists of two vertebra and the joints that connect them. There is a disc between each vertebra that acts as a cushion. Underneath that armour, a whole lot is happening. Messages travel from around the body, up the spinal cord and into the brain. The brain processes those messages and sends replies back down the spinal cord to tell the body how to respond. The central nervous system is one big information highway and it carries vital messages to every part of your body. Sometimes the wear and tear of everyday life can impact the spine and cause spinal segments to move in a way that is different to normal, in a dysfunctional way. That wear and tear can happen gradually, such as from bad posture, or it can happen suddenly, which is common with sports injuries. And because of the close relationship between the spine and the nervous system, everyday strains can actually impact the flow of information and communication between the brain and the body. Messages may not be delivered to the brain, or they may be inaccurate. When that miscommunication occurs, due to abnormal movements of the spine, chiropractors call this a vertebral subluxation, or a chiropractic subluxation. You might hear it again from your chiropractor, so now you know what it means. By making fast, gentle adjustments to the spine, chiropractors restore its natural movement. If the central nervous system is like the engine of your body, a chiropractor acts like a mechanic, tuning the spine and central nervous system so that your body can run like a race car. Just keep in mind that as you are adjusted, you may hear a popping sound that can seem a bit strange. In fact, it's completely harmless. It's just the release of gas from between spinal segments, and it's no more significant than any other release of gas from the body. So are you ready to supercharge your engine? Did you know that your brain and central nervous system are constantly changing? It's quite amazing. From one day to the next, your brain is not the same. This is what scientists call neural plasticity. So what's the cause of this change? Well, to start with, your brain receives a constant supply of messages about your body and the external environment from the sensory organs. That's your eyes, your ears, your nose, tongue, skin, and so on. With this information, your brain maintains a 3D map of your body and keeps tabs of what's going on outside of your body. Your brain needs to interpret all of this data from your senses. It translates the information it receives based on what it's learnt from your past experiences, as well as its expectations for the future, its preferences, and more. You could call this the brain's bias. There is basically a lot of background processing that happens under the radar. So how you, or your brain, sees a situation may not be entirely accurate. That means your experience isn't 100% based on reality, but is instead a perception of reality. 
let's look at an example of how the brain fills in the blanks. Look at this picture and consider which square is darker, square A or square B? Which is darker now? It's incredible, isn't it? Your brain doesn't just see what the eyes tell it. It interprets what the eyes tells it, based on other information it has already stored up. In this case, you see square A as darker than square B because square B is in the shadow of the green cylinder, while square A is outside the shadow. Based on your brain's past experience, it will decide for you that if a square in a shadow reflects the same amount of light as a square outside the shadow, then it must be a lighter shade of grey. So what happens if your brain's map of the body is inaccurate? Or if it's interpreting information based on faulty perceptions? It may mean that your brain responds to environmental cues ineffectively. But how would you know if your brain's map of the body or its knowledge of the environment was inaccurate? You may find that you become a bit clumsy, that you stub your toe often or catch your elbow on door frames. You may find that your golf swing is out or that your concentration is just not what it used to be. Or you may be overreacting emotionally to a situation. In the next video, you will find out how chiropractic care can help reset the function of the brain and the central nervous system, improving the accuracy of your brain's map of the body and the environment so that you can operate at your best. Know that your brain receives information about your body from the environment, from your sensory organs such as your eyes, your ears and your nose. But did you know that the muscles in your body are also sensory organs? As your body moves, muscles stretch and this information is sent to your brain so that it knows what your body is doing. When you think of muscles, you probably think of your biceps and triceps. You won't necessarily think of the small muscles close to your spine and skull. These small muscles do in fact play a very important role. They tell your brain what your spine is doing, what represents what the core of your body is doing. But if your spinal segments begin to move in a dysfunctional way, for example due to an injury or bad posture, that communication between your spinal muscles and your brain becomes distorted which means you have a communication breakdown between your brain and your body. If your spinal segments aren't moving correctly, it may cause background noise for your brain, or your brain might not get adequate information about what's happening in your body and will therefore have to fill in the blanks. Let's explore an analogy. Imagine for a moment that you've lived in a house all your life and that in this house there's a long, dark corridor with no windows. At the end of the corridor is an electrical fuse box. Now imagine that the circuit breaker to the lights has blown and you're pitched into complete darkness. Would you be completely helpless? Or could you walk down that corridor and turn the circuit breaker back on? Of course you could. You've lived there all your life. You would know roughly how long the corridor was and how wide it was. You would be able to get down there and turn the lights back on. Your brain is just as smart as that. It can function even if there's parts of the body that it cannot see. It will be able to function and control those parts of your body because of its past experience. But now imagine that before those lights went out, your kids had left a bicycle in that long corridor that you had not seen. What would happen in that scenario? You would likely fall and hurt yourself. And this is what happens when the brain is not fully aware of what is going on somewhere in your body or in your environment. You could end up having an accident or hurt yourself. This is where your chiropractor comes in. A chiropractor will gently adjust any dysfunctional spinal segments, or what they call vertebral subluxations, to restore healthy movement. This can improve the communication between your brain, your body and the environment. 
it's a lot like rebooting a computer. When your brain can accurately perceive what's going on inside and out, it can better control your body for the situation at hand and move muscles in the right order. This means your body moves accurately, you have fewer accidents, and you can function and perform at your best. If you have visited several different chiropractors, you probably noticed there were some differences. This is because chiropractors can study and learn many different techniques. In this video, we will share with you some of these different techniques that are available. It takes many years to learn how to apply these techniques well, which is why adjusting the spine is often considered an art form. Remember, a chiropractor's main focus is to improve spinal function with the goal of improving overall function of the body. Improving spinal function can be done in many different ways. Regardless of what technique your chiropractor has specialized in, most will still check and adjust your spine where they find areas that are not moving properly, what they call a subluxated area of your spine. Where they choose to adjust you is not random or simply because you're in pain. They will be checking for how your segments move and feel. They might poke on a segment to see if it feels tender to you. They might also take into account your posture and how you move. The subluxated segment often doesn't move appropriately like the other segments do, and they are often tender to touch. You may not even have noticed that they were sore until your chiropractor poked on that part of your spine. Some chiropractors have specialised in other techniques, also to determine how best to improve the function of your spine and body. So you may have some x-rays taken, or various other scans. They may also test the strength of some of your muscles. Some chiropractors focus on the top of your neck only. Others will check how well your joints are functioning in your entire body, including your jaw, elbows, wrists, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, and skull bones. Any one technique is not right or wrong, they are just different. So are chiropractors. So try to find a chiropractor that feels just right for you and your needs. As healthcare professionals, we want what is best for you and your health. And if that means you go and see another chiropractor, that is perfectly fine with us. When it comes to adjusting you, chiropractors again have many different options to choose from. They can adjust you with their hands and are usually trained in several different techniques so that they can do so effectively and safely. This is a skill that takes many years to master, which is why chiropractors study for five years or more at university level before they can be registered as a primary healthcare professional. Not only do they learn about anatomy and physiology and pathology, but they spend many years developing their skills to be able to gently adjust spinal segments to best serve you. Other ways they can adjust you is with an instrument. There are several different types of instruments available, such as the activator or the impulse. Some use these instruments and adjust you according to a set protocol that has been developed over many years. Others use these instruments as an alternative to adjusting you by hand. We know from research studies that the instrument-assisted adjustment is faster and even more gentle than adjusting by hand, and that they activate the same neural tissues as manual adjustments or hand adjustments. But we also know that manual adjustments, or adjustments done by hand, can be more effective at producing results for some people. However, we don't yet know enough about what is best for you at any particular time. One study showed that if you are in acute pain, that you get faster pain relief from adjustments done by hand as compared to adjustments done while following the activator protocol. So if you are in acute pain and want to get out of pain as fast as possible, you might want to get adjustments done by hand first. Another way that chiropractors can adjust is by using a special table where parts of the table can drop away slightly but suddenly. 
These special drop piece tables take advantage of the sudden drop where one part of your spine is firmly lying on the table while the vertebra above it is not supported on the table. This again can very gently help restore proper function to spinal segments. Again, there are some who have developed a whole adjusting protocol around the use of such special tables, while others use them simply as a means to get the right adjustment done for the person they are working with. There are still many, many more ways a chiropractor can adjust you. They can use special foam blocks to put under your pelvis. By using your body weight, this can ease or stretch your pelvic ligaments. There are also many techniques that focus on correcting poor posture or help improve non-spinal joints such as wrists and ankles and jaws and cranial bones. Your body is one big, complex, interconnected system. Some chiropractors will give you exercises and stretches to do at home. Some have specialised in nutrition or homeopathy and so much more. No one way is necessarily better than any other. But you may prefer one or more of these various techniques. We want you to get the most out of your chiropractic care by becoming aware of what's available. Some people are worried about seeing a chiropractor because they think that chiropractic adjustments might be harmful or dangerous. So let's look at the research literature on this topic to see what the science actually says. When we look at the literature relating to chiropractic care, we can see that it's remarkably safe. And it's effective. And it's associated with high levels of patient satisfaction. A number of studies have reported that chiropractic care is at least as effective as, if not more effective, than traditional medical management for patients with a variety of spine-related issues. Chiropractic care actually has an enviable safety record compared to most other healthcare interventions. However, virtually all forms of healthcare are associated with some risk, so let's look closer at this. With the sort of manual or hands-on procedures that chiropractors use in everyday practice, it's logical that there is at least some risk that on rare occasions some people may suffer from an adverse event after seeing their chiropractor. A number of researchers have reviewed all of the published literature relating to the safety of chiropractic care. According to these reviews, serious adverse events are very rare and most of the time the scientists weren't sure if the chiropractic care actually caused the event or not. Because serious adverse events are so few following chiropractic care, it's virtually impossible for researchers to accurately estimate how often they actually occur. So there are only rough estimates for serious adverse events, and these estimates range from 1 in 20,000 to 1 in several million chiropractic visits. To compare this with other types of medical care, we know, for example, that as many as one in three adverse events can occur if someone goes to hospital. What is more common with chiropractic care is that some people can feel a bit stiff and sore after they've been adjusted, but this usually goes away by itself. So according to the best systematic reviews of all the scientific literature on this topic, we know that being seriously hurt from seeing your chiropractor is extremely rare. In fact, the statistics tell us that you are about 10 times more likely to be seriously injured driving to and from your chiropractor's office than you are from being seriously injured while seeing your chiropractor. Despite all of these studies showing how rare adverse events are with chiropractic care, there are still some people who are worried a chiropractic adjustment could cause a stroke. This has also been studied very carefully. In two separate studies, researchers looked at extremely large patient databases from insurance plans in Canada and America and compared over 2,600 patients who had actually suffered from a stroke involving the arteries in their neck and they compared them to people who hadn't had a stroke. 
they looked to see whether the people who had suffered a stroke were more likely to have seen a chiropractor or a medical doctor before suffering from the stroke. What they found was that people who had suffered from one of these strokes were no more likely to have seen a chiropractor than a medical doctor before the stroke occurred. In some groups, they were actually more likely to have visited a medical doctor than a chiropractor before the stroke. So what does this mean? The studies suggest that patients who are suffering from a stroke after seeing a chiropractor are probably going to see the chiropractor because they had neck pain or headaches that had been caused by the early stages of the blood vessel damage that ultimately caused the stroke. So they were having a stroke in progress before they went to see the chiropractor. It also means that there is no greater risk of suffering from a stroke if you choose to visit a chiropractor compared to the risks of visiting a medical doctor. So if you or someone you know is worried about seeing a chiropractor, you can rest assured that chiropractic care is associated with very low risk of causing serious harm. The risks are so rare that they cannot be accurately estimated. And of the risk estimates that have been made, most suggest that serious adverse events associated with chiropractic care happens perhaps every several hundred thousand visits. Like any healthcare intervention, some adverse events do of course occur with chiropractic care, and these adverse events are generally minor and go away by themselves, and don't take away from the high levels of patient satisfaction associated with chiropractic care. So despite what some people think, chiropractic has an enviable safety record and you can rest assured that if you go see your chiropractor, you're in safe hands. Modern healthcare should be based on a combination of research, the clinical experience of your healthcare provider, and your wishes and values. You deserve to know the scientific facts about your healthcare. So your healthcare provider should know what the best available evidence is that's relevant to you, and they should share it with you when you see them. But not all things have yet been studied, so your healthcare provider also has to rely on their own clinical experience when caring for you. At the end of the day, your healthcare is your choice and you have every right to make choices based on your own values and beliefs. This is in fact known as evidence-based practice or evidence-informed practice. Your healthcare providers are taught to share with you the best available scientific evidence in easy-to-understand language without any silly jargon. They're also taught to share with you their own clinical experience and then to allow you to make your own healthcare decisions. Chiropractic has a great scientific basis that is growing every day, so you can take great comfort in knowing that there has been lots of research done about chiropractic care. We know from many research studies that chiropractic is safe, and that people who see chiropractors really love the care they receive. We know from the science that chiropractic care improves your brain's ability to see what's going on in and around your body. This means you can have all sorts of improvements in your health and function, other than just the reason you went to see a chiropractor to begin with. Many people say they experience improvements in things like the way they breathe, or their blood pressure, or even their digestion when they get adjusted, irrespective of whether they saw their chiropractor because they were in pain or not. How cool is that? We also know from science that people who have spinal problems such as back pain, neck pain and headaches improve well under chiropractic care. Let me give you an example. Low back pain may be due to a breakdown in the way your brain is controlling the muscles of your back. So your back and brain aren't talking to each other properly, which may mean that you aren't able to control and stabilize your spine properly and protect yourself from injuring your back, for example when you move or lift an object. This is where a chiropractor can help. A chiropractor will gently adjust any dysfunctional spinal segments in your back, or what they call chiropractic subluxations. 
They do this to restore healthy spinal movement and to improve the communication between your brain and your body, which may have an impact on the way your brain is controlling the muscles in your back. For many people with back pain, this can result in a big difference to the way they feel and function. And it can help them to get over their back pain and back to enjoying life. The research backs this up and tells us that for people with low back pain, chiropractic care is as effective, if not more effective, than other healthcare options. More research needs to be done to work out just how effective it is. But for now, the research suggests that there's no better healthcare options available. The same is true for other conditions such as neck pain and many types of headaches. There's also lots of research being done that looks at how chiropractors can help people with all sorts of problems that may be caused due to a breakdown in communication between your brain and your body. It turns out that spinal function is really important for your brain to know what's going on in and around you. So when you see your chiropractor, you can feel secure knowing that the care they provide is backed up by research as well as their clinical experience. But remember, your health care is your choice and you can make choices based on your own values and beliefs. And this lies at the heart of evidence-based health care. So have you seen your family chiropractor lately? If not, go have your brain-body connection fine-tuned because chiropractic is all about helping you feel great and get the most out of life by functioning at your optimal potential. If you have been adjusted before by a chiropractor, you may have noticed a popping sound that may seem a little strange. Many people think all kinds of strange things about this popping sound, so let's set the record straight. The popping sound is only the formation of gas within a joint, and it's no more significant than any other gas release from the body. The popping sound does not mean that you're getting arthritis. A number of studies have looked at people who have routinely cracked their knuckles for years and years and compared them to non-knuckle crackers to see if there's any difference in x-ray images of their hands. These studies all came back with the same conclusion. Habitual knuckle cracking over the course of several decades is not associated with clinical or radiographic evidence of osteoarthritis. Of course, you could argue that the spine is part of your weight-bearing system and hands are not. So you could ask, can you really compare the two? But all the evidence that is available suggests that cracking joints has nothing to do with causing arthritis. The popping sound does not actually matter at all. Whether or not you hear the popping sound makes absolutely no difference to how good the adjustment was. There have been several research studies that have looked at whether adjustments with the popping sound meant that there were better outcomes for the patients being adjusted but all these studies show that it makes no difference whether or not there was a popping sound. All it really means is that the chiropractor adjusted you really fast. We do know that higher adjustment speed means that you are more likely to get a popping sound. But this popping sound does not mean that you'll get better outcomes from your adjustment. Silent adjustments, if they improve spinal function, are just as good as loud popping ones. There have been all sorts of theories about what the popping sound really is. Some have thought the sound was caused by tendons snapping over a joint, or a bone being put back into place, or the snapping of adhesions or scar tissue. Recently, there was a really cool study done that actually looked at what was happening in a joint when there was popping sounds. The researchers of this study used video magnetic resonance imaging to study what happened in a person's finger joint when they pulled his finger until his knuckle made the popping sound. So they used a cable attached to his finger and slowly pulled his finger until it cracked, while recording this with video MRI. They also measured the space between the joint surfaces before and after the crack 
using automatic computer software. What they found was that the joints remained very close together during the early stages of the finger being pulled. And then when the force of the pull was strong enough, the joint would very quickly separate and a bubble would form. And this was when the popping sound was heard. This means that the popping sound you hear when a chiropractor adjusts you is simply a change in state between liquid and gas within a joint. There is a really cool name for this too. It's called tribonucleation. Try that one after a few drinks. It's actually very similar to what happens when you open a champagne bottle, but it's all happening in an enclosed joint space. Early on, it was thought that the popping sound was associated with unhealthy joints. But as far back as the 1930s, scientists were showing that this also occurs in perfectly healthy joints. So keep this in mind next time you get adjusted by your chiropractor, that the popping sound doesn't have anything to do with bones grinding or rubbing, but instead is simply gas bubbles forming within a joint as your adjustment separates the two joint surfaces that are very close together. When you first see your chiropractor, you may be among the many people who ask, how often do I need to come? Often the answer you may want to hear is once. But chiropractic care, like most things that are really good for us, rarely makes a long-term difference to your health and wellness after just one visit. One reason for this is that it usually takes years for the problem to develop that motivates someone to first see a chiropractor. And it can take many visits to the chiropractor to correct that problem. One way of looking at it is that it can be like the thousandth straw that breaks the camel's back. So a problem can build up day after day as you sit hunched over your desk, or bend and twist as you lift, or tense up as you deal with your daily stress. And then one day you bend to tie your shoelaces and all of a sudden something hurts. You can rest assured that tying your shoelaces isn't what caused the problem. It's simply the thousandth straw that broke the camel's back and that's why you're hurting. There will usually be changes to the way the supporting muscles in your spine work that build up over time until the muscles can't cope anymore and symptoms appear. So seeing your chiropractor can be a little bit like going to the gym. It takes time, frequency and follow-up. Working with you to correct the problem and help your brain and muscles in your spine to communicate or talk with each other again so that you can regain the stability that you need to function properly and resolve your aches and pains. But how long will this take, and how often do you need to be checked by your chiropractor? Well, everybody is different, so your chiropractor will be guided by their clinical experience and what your goals are when they recommend a care plan for you. A new research study was recently published that suggests that in the early stages of chiropractic care, the more often you get adjusted, the better the results you enjoy. And this can also be better for you in the long term as well. In the study that was conducted by scientists in America, they looked at 256 people who had chronic regular headaches and divided them into groups who either received chiropractic care once a week or twice a week or three times a week for up to six weeks. Or they received no chiropractic care at all and instead were given light massages over the same six-week period. Previous studies have shown that people with this kind of headache often respond well to chiropractic care. So the scientists in this study were most interested in how many times per week that it was best for the patients to get chiropractic care. They looked at how many days a week a patient suffered from headaches at the end of the study, and whether any changes in headache frequency between the groups was still there up to a year later. What they found was that the patients who were seen by their chiropractor the most regularly, so up to three times a week, had fewer headaches than those who were seen once or twice a week, and they were much better than the patients who received no chiropractic care at all. And in fact, after one year, the patients that had been seen three times a week had more than three fewer headaches per month compared to patients who only received a light massage. So these effects obviously lasted. 
This study was done in people with chronic headaches, so we can't be sure if the same differences occur in people with other problems who see a chiropractor. A similar study in patients with chronic low back pain did find that people who were adjusted more often had the best results, but the results weren't as clear as this study done in patients with headaches. What these studies suggest is that seeing a chiropractor more often when you begin care has real beneficial long-term effects to the way your spine and nervous system works. But how much you benefit may depend on what's wrong with your spine when you begin care. So when you go and see your chiropractor, know that their recommendations for your plan of care is based on what their clinical experience tells them is best for you. And that the research suggests that more frequent adjustments has the biggest positive impact on your health and wellness. Have you ever experienced a traumatic event? If you have, you are not alone. A recent survey of Americans found that 9 out of every 10 people have experienced at least one traumatic event in their life. But did you know that such experiences could be affecting your health and well-being? The stress of a traumatic event impacts your brain in a very specific way. Your brain would have activated your sympathetic nervous system and releases hormones that flood your brain and body with adrenaline and cortisol. The brain's alarm system, the emotional limbic part of your brain, is responsible for this, and it also turns off your logical rational thinking part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex. You will likely experience this by feeling emotional, either sad or angry or frightened and you will not be able to think clearly. You may snap, or scream, or cry, or lash out in anger. The problem is it doesn't end here. A traumatic event can actually change the way your brain responds from that day onwards. After a traumatic experience, anything that even vaguely reminds your brain about what happened will again cause very specific changes in your brain your brain's alarm system can become hypervigilant. The brain doesn't forget. This means that anything even vaguely similar to the traumatic event will trigger another emotional storm in your brain. And over time, this can impact your brain and body in many ways. Because of these changes to the brain, you can end up with a variety of health problems, such as anxiety, depression, and even post-traumatic stress disorder. It may trigger bipolar disorder and is known to influence schizophrenia. But it's not just mental health problems that can occur due to traumatic experiences. The changes that happen in the brain also impact the rest of your body. You may end up with high blood pressure, increased heart rate and high breathing rates. This puts extra stress on your cardiovascular system. Your immune system may also be affected and you can end up with higher levels of inflammation. And there are a whole host of health problems that are linked with high inflammation and a weakened immune system. You may also end up with difficulty focusing and paying attention. A host of digestive system problems are also linked to these stress-induced changes that occur in the brain due to traumatic experiences. And your muscles can get stiff, tight and sore. Stress also turns off the small muscles close to your spine and skull, making it harder for your brain to know accurately what is going on in and around you. If you think your health concerns are a result of your traumatic experiences, it's important you seek help from experienced healthcare providers. You may need help from several different healthcare providers, depending on what sort of symptoms you have. We are all so different and stressful events can affect us in different ways. If you have ended up with mental health problems, it's important to seek professional advice from a trained mental health professional. They can help you in many ways. They can help you by reframing your experiences and calming your brain down so it stops being so overreactive. Exercising is also known to be helpful. 
It helps pump out all the cortisol and adrenaline from your body and can help limber up your stiff sore muscles. Even as little as a short walk every day will help. Mindfulness meditation and yoga can also be very helpful. Both can help you be more present in your body and your mind, which is key to calming down your brain's overreactive alarm system. Eating healthy natural foods is also very helpful. Your brain and body is already stressed, so does not need the additional burden of having to deal with artificial chemicals in processed foods. It's also a great idea to regularly see your family chiropractor. Your chiropractor can activate the small muscles closest to your spine and skull, which will help your brain know more accurately what's going on inside your body and the world around you. Chiropractic care also provides you with safe touch that can be very healing. And we know chiropractic adjustments can change processing in the part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. You want this part of your brain working as well as it can, as this part of the brain helps you think clearly and rationally and is connected to your calming and healing nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. This is probably why so many people who see chiropractors report that it makes them feel well, relax easier and cope better. So if you suspect your current health concerns could be due to traumatic events from your past, do seek help from trained healthcare providers. Exercise regularly, do yoga and mindfulness meditation, and regularly go and see your family chiropractor so you can relax easier, feel better, be more resilient, and function at your best. People go to see a chiropractor for many different reasons. Some go because they want help with back pain, or neck pain, or headaches. Some go because they want to perform better on sporting fields or athletic tracks. Some want to sleep better, or be better able to deal with stress. But you might be surprised to know that almost 50% of chiropractic patients go to see their chiropractor because they simply want to maintain their health and well-being. This is what chiropractors call maintenance care. The idea with maintenance care is that regular adjustments will help maintain your spine and nervous system function at its optimal level and help you to be your best and to prevent new episodes of pain developing. So what does the research tell us about maintenance care? Well, it tells us that maintenance care makes perfect sense if you want to function at your best. We know that if your brain doesn't send appropriate protective messages to your core trunk muscles, you will have a higher risk of developing low back injuries. This makes sense because a lack of core stability means you're basically creating a mini whiplash injury to your spine each time you move around or lift your arm and leg. So if you end up in pain after bending over to tie your shoelaces, your pain hasn't really just come out of the blue. It's usually been developing for some time without you knowing about it. It's often the thousandth straw that breaks the camel's back. All of life's stressors can build up and impact the way your brain communicates with your trunk muscles. And then all that is needed is one last minor thing to go wrong and you end up with pain or other symptoms. The goal of maintenance care is to help take the straws off the camel's back before they cause symptoms or have a big impact on your life. A study published by researchers from Sweden in 2018 showed the benefits of maintenance care in a group of people who suffered from low back pain. In this study, the researchers followed 328 patients with low back pain who went to 40 different Swedish chiropractic clinics. If the patients responded well when they were first adjusted, they joined the study and either received chiropractic maintenance care over the next year or symptom-guided care. The maintenance care patients were seen every one to three months with the intention being that they were checked 
before substantial pain reoccurred. Patients in the control group, they were told to call in if the pain reoccurred. They were then adjusted until they got better and then were told to call again if the pain reoccurred. What the researchers were most interested in was the number of total days of bothersome back pain suffered by each group throughout the one-year trial period. What they found was that the maintenance care group experienced 13 fewer days of pain over the course of the study on average compared to the symptom-guided group. The amazing thing from this study was that the maintenance care group needed less than two extra visits to their chiropractor over the course of the year to have 13 fewer days of pain. This suggests that the patients who have had low back pain who respond well to chiropractic care should see their chiropractor regularly, irrespective of whether their symptoms have returned or not. This study did have some limitations, of course, just like all studies do. One limitation was that the chiropractors were told not to schedule their maintenance care patients more frequently than once a month. So some patients in this group may have benefited even more if the chiropractors had been able to schedule their visits more frequently if they thought that was a good idea. This study shows that it's really important to keep your spine working well, even if you don't have pain or symptoms. If you want to function at your optimal potential, consider chiropractic maintenance care because the research suggests your spine will love you for it. Most people know that having a healthy heart rate is important. You don't want your heart to beat too fast and you don't want it to beat too slow. It should be just the right pace to provide your vital organs and muscles with just the right amount of blood and oxygen that you need to survive and thrive. What many people don't know though is that the natural variation in someone's heart rate is also important. Your heart shouldn't beat at a constant steady rate all day, it should vary based on whether you are resting or exercising, whether you are happy or angry, nervous or relaxed. Your brain is constantly detecting what is happening inside and outside of you, and one of the ways it responds to changes in your environment is by increasing or decreasing your heart rate. These natural changes can be measured and are called your heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is controlled by your nervous system specifically the part of your nervous system that controls your autonomic functions, like breathing and digesting, the things that we don't have to think about doing, the ones that just happen. A good heart rate variability is one that is high, and it's thought to indicate a healthy heart and body, one that is able to respond appropriately and adapt to the environment and the needs. For example, if you get into a fight, or suddenly need to run really fast, your nervous system will quickly need to increase your heart rate so that it can pump enough blood to your muscles so you can run or fight. However, when you're sleeping or relaxed, you don't want your heart to beat very fast, as this is not a good thing for you. So your brain will perceive this and then decrease your heart rate. In order for your nervous system to be able to increase or decrease your heart rate based on your needs, your brain needs to be able to properly sense what is going on in and around it. We know now from a lot of neuroscience research studies that when segments of your spine are not moving properly, what some chiropractors call being subluxated, this changes the way your brain can sense what is going on in and around your body and the way your brain controls your body. Research has shown that when a chiropractor gently adjusts these subluxations, it helps your brain to more accurately perceive or see what's going on in and around your body. So when your chiropractor adjusts you, it might help you to be able to respond and adapt better to your environment and keep you balanced and healthy. This is why some chiropractors will measure your heart rate variability when you are under chiropractic care, so they can see how well you are responding to the chiropractic care and to see how you are currently adapting to your environment. A group of researchers wanted to know more about chiropractic and heart rate variability so they got 96 different chiropractors to measure heart rate variability before and after a single adjustment session on some of their patients. And for some of these patients, they measured their heart rate variability 
over the course of four weeks of chiropractic care. Altogether, 539 adults had their heart rate variability recorded before and after their adjustments, and 111 had their heart rate variability measured across four weeks of chiropractic care. They found that in both of these groups, there was a significant improvement in their heart rate variability measurements, and that in the group that was assessed over four weeks, these improvements were sustained. When we put this study together with other research that has been published about chiropractic care and heart rate variability, it suggests that chiropractic adjustments can influence heart rate variability. And very importantly, in the stressful, fast-paced life we often live these days, chiropractic care appears to increase the healing and calming side of our autonomic nervous system. Although we do need more research on this area. But if you are interested in good health, adaptability, and want to better respond to stress and your environment, why don't you consider chiropractic care and make sure your spine is functioning as well as it can so you can operate at your optimal potential.